No, this is great. Uh, no, have, have whew, happy afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or morning or night, wherever you might be listening to or watching this. Uh, my name is Brian Shu. I'm with Full Moon Digital, and the, we are doing Lockdown with Thought Leaders. So today, I have a distinct pleasure of having Gus Lawson with us. And I will tell you, Gus is a networking guru. I mean, the man is a networking genius and I love his thoughts every day that I see something he posts about networking and, you know, through LinkedIn. I, it's something amazing and it's something very thought provoking. So Gus, I want to turn it over to you, kind of introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do, a little about who you are, and we'll go into some deeper dive questions. Great. Well, Brian, thank you so much. I'm, I'm flattered by your kind words. Uh, you're just as throwing some great thought for booking stuff there out there too. And so I really enjoy seeing your content. And I guess if I had to leave, have one takeaway for everyone is that you all can be thought leaders and you all can be putting yourself out there and really sharing uh, your expertise. I think it's with it, within everyone. And um, so I think as we discuss networking and getting as i've helped people get comfortable with networking that kind of next stage is getting comfortable comfortable throwing yourself out there and so a lot of similar beliefs there um but let's get to my story real quickly so believe it or not actually uh, five years ago i hated networking i thought that networking you had to be somebody else other than who you were I saw schmoozers who kind of lack substance uh, succeed a little bit, and that left a sour taste in my mouth. I also thought that I could be rewarded based upon my own good work, hard work ethic. Uh, so those factors really uh, kept me believing that I didn't need networking. And then also based upon my military experience and even experiences with a large consulting company, where I was given my next assignment. Hey, here's your next project, go do great things. So those experiences all believed that, or make, helped me believe that I didn't need networking. So let's fast forward to when I was 42 years old. I, the large consulting firm that I worked with had restructured. I found myself on a new team and I had a clearance at the time and my clearance evaporated because my background investigation lapsed. And even though I had submitted the paperwork, uh, nothing had, no action had been proceeded on that. And so when I went to start my next assignment, oh, you don't have a clearance, you can't go to that project, we'll give you a month, um, but if you don't find anything, we're gonna let you go. And so ultimately I was let go and my saving grace was I had just completed my coaching certification. And so as a result, I was able to reframe some of my beliefs about networking. And so that I realized ultimately that I could be myself in networking and that if I prepare uh, my elevator pitch ahead of time, and if I just do it enough times, I'll gain comfort. And so that's how I worked. That's how I rolled. Uh, and then eventually my own networking led me to some speaking opportunities for USO Pathfinders program and then also hiring our heroes, their corporate fellowship and uh, military spouse fellowship programs where I was actually helping them gain comfort with networking. Uh, and it was through that process that I realized, you know what, I've got a story to tell here and let me help prevent others from going through what I had to prevent. So that's kind of my whole uh, little story uh, about me getting affiliated with networking. And, and that's a great, and that's really great, bring up some great points because so many of us, whether it be military or civilian, we, when we think of networking, we're like, oh, that doesn't sound good. And there's <laughs> so many negative connotations about networking because so many of us have thought, uh, you kind of just kind of like, elbow people and like uh, hey you know you, you help me and I'll help you back and it's not necessarily about that is it Gus I mean it's it's more about those relationships and I think that's a vital part of who we are as humans we need to understand this is about those relationships we need to build that can be advantageous for us so I thank you for you know 
being willing to tell that story because so many people don't understand the value of networking until they actually see it be successful. Yep. And it's just like anything else where if we try something new and we see benefits of those new behaviors, we'll then start to reshape and reform our beliefs. And so to hit on what you said, absolutely. Networking doesn't have to be, I'll give you this if you give me that. Uh, let me push, push, push and sell, sell, sell. What can I squeeze out of this relationship? It doesn't have to be that way at all. Um, if you come from a place of service and giving, uh, networking is really just, uh, it boils down to introducing or sharing information and then connecting people with others that they may value uh, connecting with uh, and learning and discovering what others value and then finding opportunities to provide that value. And that's a vital point. I think we should be celebrating with networking is being able to share that vision of, hey, it's not necessarily uh, who gets what out of what. It's a how can I help another person become get to that next level because a lot of us is is looking at this as how can i make that next step up you know from one level to another and that's where networking comes into play is that that's where you get to to make those next steps is you have that network that supports you that is invested in you as much as you are invested in it so you know i want to you know if i was jobless right now which i'm sure those people that are watching this are how would i network what would I do to network successfully into my next role? Great, great question, Brian. And so for me, I think the key there, another one of my key takeaways is I want people to be selfish in their strategy and selfless in their personal interactions. So I recognize that when I say selfish, people say, well, hey, you were just talking about giving and and so doesn't that contradict? And I say no, and here's why. Because when you know specifically what your career mission is and what you're trying to achieve, just networking for networking's sake may not get you there. And what can oftentimes happen are the one and done discussions, where if you go to an event, you meet people, and you say, yeah, maybe I'm interested in talking to this person, and then there's typically a, not a conversation or a, a enough out of that where you have a follow-on conversation. And so when you're networking with purpose and you're being selfish about your intent, but again, you're being of a place of service and you're helping others selflessly, then things start clicking. Then you start building the relationships. So for example, um, when I first started coaching, I thought, okay, part of my getting my coaching credential is I need to coach six people and I need to record six different sessions. And so coaching is popular. I can imagine I'm going to get, you know, hundreds of people that are interested in coaching. And so I put a post, this was in 2015, crickets. I got nobody responded based upon my original interest. And why? Because I hadn't developed those relationships. So then I started pushing out content, building relationships. Um, and I still, to be honest with you, this was before I figured out my niche. And so then I had developed some relationships. Uh, I think you and even Brian at the time. And then I said, all right, here's an opportunity for me to, to coach some other people. And because I had developed those relationships, that post gained traction. And as a result, I was able to coach five or six additional people. And doing that allowed me to exceed my threshold for the hours I needed for my certification. So yes, coaching and, or, and getting out there and building those relationships is key. And, and that goes back to, uh, that's a great point about building those relationships. In today's environment, how would you successfully build those relationships? What would you do to, to get to that point of somebody saying, hey, I trust you enough. I want to introduce you to others. Yep. So 
I think it goes back to that giving spirit. So being showing that you are giving, um, that you are uh, willing to help others before you're before you're taking. The other key component, actually, it just went away for me for a second. Um, so the other key component is that you start small. You're finding things in common with each other. You're building those areas, and it doesn't have to be about work. Uh, so, f for example, um, was on a call today with my clients, and you know, as we we're talking beforehand, what did we discover? That we all watched Tiger King over the weekend. And so, what? <laughs> so, what? What did we talk about? We talked about Tiger King, and I made the joke that mm. um, you know, my wife doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to be leaving her because I want to find some people that are strung out on drugs, uh, that are a little bit younger and male. Uh, I'm oh kidding, my god! Of course, but uh, you know, so it's those little things, and you can see that I'm interjecting some humor in here, and it's it's just about being human. So having these human relationships, discovering finding things, being a detective as far as, hey, what do we have in common? So it's those simple questions. And when you go even to a virtual networking event now, because right, you know, we're all in a different time now, but it's finding those common things. So, hey, where's, where's your favorite tra travel destination? Uh, what's something you're excited about? Um, you know, just these very simple questions and then you're listening, you're using your ears, you're discovering what you have in common with people and you're building on that. And then relationships are best built on trust and value. So then finding out what those other people value and then again, delivering on that value. And then as a result, that trust will go up. And then as you build and develop that relationship, here's the key that a lot of people struggle with and myself included is having that specific request ready to go. So if we think of, again, the military folks that are transitioning, okay, well, I wanna be a project manager, or I've thought about HR, or I wanna be a security person, okay? All right, well, that's really wide, and I have no idea who I wanna connect with. But now, if you use my career mission as statement as an example, say, I help introverts, gain comfort with networking. Now, which of those two scenarios gives you a better picture of who you want to connect me with? So being specific in your request and then, or what your interests are, and then using an open-ended question to then say, um, who, who do you have in mind that may value connecting with me? And so then now, rather than saying, do you know anybody? Because when we ask a closed-ended question, people will typically automatically default to no. But by asking that open-ended question, we can then get people to open up and really think about the question uh, before they respond. Those are great perspectives. And one that I definitely, you know, I think would be advantageous for a lot of the people that are watching this is, you know, think about how you're asking those questions. How are you placing yourself into being introduced into those conversations that those individuals will have because it, it is you know even i've realized this is people hire people they trust if they don't know you they're not going to trust you guess what if they don't trust you they don't hire you yeah. and if you're looking at i need a job i need to be or i'm looking into a new organization well, you have to build that trust how yeah. you build that trust you build that trust through relationships well how do you build relationships you build relationships through networking and this is like where I really, you know, rely on you is how do I successfully build relationships that people will come back and say, hey, I know you know this person. Can you introduce me? And having that ability to say, you know what, I don't know you that well yet, but let's, let's build a relationship so I do know you, so I can trust you, so I can yep. then introduce you to people inside my network. Yep. And it's so it's the relationship piece. And then it also goes back to that career mission statement, which I talked about earlier, is having that crystal clear mission statement about who you help and then having that giving nature 
that then allows you to keep in mind. And then also one of the specific tactics is that as you're building your network, it's not just that initial discussion, it's about how you maintain that relationship. So the tip there that I found just really has really helped transform my networking game is by asking when questions. So uh, for example, you say, uh, you know, well, when is that event that you have? Or when are you starting your new job? Or uh, when are you traveling? Well, obviously that's gonna be for a while now, but um, you know, but by asking those when questions, I then log the responses into my spreadsheet, my tracker, and then I use my tracker to say, all right, who do I need to contact this week based upon those responses? And then so I have the notes and I know when to follow up. And based upon that, I send them the, uh, send them the note. Hey, I know you're starting your job next week. Um, just wanted to send you a note, best wishes to you. And so rather than waiting for that LinkedIn response that says they started their new job, I'm ahead of that. So what does that do to the person? So yeah, everybody can respond when you say, oh, congratulations, they just updated their profile. Now I'm ahead of that curve and I'm reaching out to them. So that elevates me with respect to their network. Any, any thoughts or reactions there? No, that, that, you really brought up a great idea for a lot of us that you know, when, you're, when you're looking at networking successfully, even if you're not even in the job hunt or you're not even in you know, the, the <laughs> networking sphere, but you're still obviously networking in general, you know, being able to have those win conversations with somebody, you know, can really enlighten them and endear them, really, if you think about this, endear them to you and say, he's really invested in me. He is really interested in what's going on in my life and, you know, now in today's environment. That's what we really should be looking at is how are we investing in each other, not just professionally, but also personally. Are we asking those questions? How are you doing? What are you doing? When are you able to do this? Can obviously open up those conversations into deeper topics that can easily open those doors into, well, hey, yeah. when this is all said and done, which who knows when that is. But when it is done, companies are going to be looking at how can we reinvent reinvigorate our workforce. And companies might be looking at, well, I need to add to my team. Well, if you start that relationship with somebody inside that organization, they can might go to their manager and say, hey, boss, I got to know this guy during this whole lockdown thing. He was a great guy. We've had great conversations. I think you'd be great to, great to get to know him. And, you know, he might be great for our teams. Well, again, when I've, I've talked to people, it's like I've realized people hire people they trust. And if they don't trust you, they don't want to hire you. Well, how do you build that trust? You build that through those conversations like you were talking about. And I really like that now asking those when questions because many of us forget to ask that because we, we see, hey, I'm starting the job. Well, we forget to ask, well, when is it? <laughs> I mean, I'm guilty of that just as much as anybody because for me, I'm starting to lose track of which day it is. So I thought today was like yeah. Thursday or something because I'm like, eh, I don't really, I think it might be Tuesday. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> it's some day during the week and our hell, it might still be the weekend. I don't know. But, you know, being able to kind of build into that conversation piece of when are you doing this or when is this going on can really elevate that that relationship to another level because it, again it shows that you care yep yep absolutely yeah nothing nothing really to expand on there i think you've you've done a really nice job of of, of highlighting the, those key points um one thing that you did mention that i would like to to speak to is you know, obviously a lot of companies have stopped their hiring process. Don't let that, for those that are, you know, in a transition period, maybe they have been uh, laid off or reduced hours, or they're, we're looking to make a change anyway. Don't let that assumption stop you from continuing your networking activities because you never know. Uh, and the whole point and the, the biggest thing since networking and going through kind of the, the steps that I've talked about is opportunities will start coming to you. 
when you have that clear mission statement, when you have those relationships, when you start putting yourself out there, that's going to attract people to you. And so, especially during this time, you know, we have to think creatively, we have to be innovative, we have to, you know, try new things. And so by continuing to network, by testing things out, um, by continuing to learn, and I'd like to highlight um, Destiny, uh, Destiny Pretz, uh growth mindset uh, journal that she's starting, um, you know, really explore and think about, you know, what's possible. And if you have that growth mindset, let's really see what we can accomplish. And so what I encourage people to do now is even if you are stable and you're in a good situation, think about what is your plan B and what is it that you want to do so that you, you get ahead. And I really think that that's a great point to bring up because what does happen? You have a plan B and, and that's a great point that, that I think we can explore further is, you know, div, what does a plan B look like? And how do you develop said plan B? And that's, you know, and to me, what I rely on a lot is my network and having those conversations with individuals and having those open-ended questions being asked of me and, and asking by me to those people that I know. And again, that's also building that trust factor. And, and that's a big thing for me with um, networking, especially is, is trust. Can I trust you to follow through on what we talk about? Or can I trust you that I know your skills are exactly what you say they are? Yep. And that's then that just comes from easy conversations. And that also comes from you being willing to be open and being vulnerable. And that's another thing about networking that I've realized is that I don't always have to be that, oh, look at me. You know, I'm the, you know, I was, you know, look at all the things I've accomplished. Yes, those are great, but that doesn't have to be the the total package of me. I can tell those, but I can tell them in a way that's just like, you know what, hey, I've done all these great things, but you know what, I'm also a human. I'm also a, per, a person that is looking to expand his professional, you know, ex, or his professional network. And I yep. think that can be a great topic of conversation for you is, you know, how do we merge or blend those two together? Because now it's not a work-life balance per se, as it is a work-life blend. So how are we blending these two together to make them stable so we're not focusing just on one side but we're not, and we're not focusing on just the other side? We're focusing right kind of somewhere in the middle, somewhere that's kind of like, oh, I feel comfortable here, but I also feel comfortable here. My work is getting done. My boss is happy. My teams are happy. My, what, my significant other my family is happy. They're, they feel like they're being, you know, being tended to <laughs> adequately. So having that balance, having that blend of, you know, that stability is, a, is especially crucial in today's environment. So, yep. you know, and I think that's where we can come into networking with each other is, hey, you know what? My kids are home. They're driving me crazy. Well, guess what? My kids are home too, and they're driving me crazy. Well, how are you dealing with your kids? I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Oh, wow. So we have something that can bond us even to a different another to a different level. And that and that can really be beneficial to us because when we share experiences, we we grow more in tune with each other. Yep. Yep, absolutely. The more I find that the more that I'm open and sharing, that that helps me. Uh, this brings me to uh a resource that uh, people may value. It's called The Platinum Rule, and it's a book written by uh, Dr. Tony Alessandra. And so he breaks communication down into two dimensions. So either you're open or guarded, or you are direct or indirect. And so by learning how to balance uh, and learning where others are in their communication style, you can really adapt your communication style accordingly. And so uh, I don't want to dive too deep here, um, but it's, it's, it's just really helped me from a, from a relationship building perspective.
So for example, I had a boss that she was a bottom line upfront person. And typically I'm the type of guy who says, here's what I've seen. Here's the experiences. Here are a couple different options. Here's the result. Well, that kind of drove my boss bonkers because she wanted, she wanted the bottom line up front. And it wasn't until I discovered that. And so the whole platinum rule, the principle is, is it's we want to treat others how they want to be treated. So the golden rule of course is, you know, we treat others like we want to be treated, but from a communications perspective, we communicate to others the way that they want to be communicated to. And that's, just done a lot for me to help build those relationships. And that's a great point. I think a lot of us fail to, maybe not necessarily fail to realize, but we don't necessarily need to communicate how we want to be spoken to. We need to communicate as others around us need to be because they also deal with things differently. You know, your boss, or if you're a leader, your team members may not understand why you're talking in the way you're talking to or how you're managing their their um their workload like you're you've always done so that's where it comes into are you openly communicating with your team um in this in this very new reality because again you know, we kind of got just thrown into this and we weren't really prepared but here we are how are we going to make the most of it we made the most of it by communicating with each other and as leaders it's not this it's it's our job to communicate and maybe it's over communication, but in, in essence, you're not really, there's no really such thing as over communicating as there is this, you're actually saying the expectations of your team by communicating with them. And that's whether it's by email, by phone, by text, by smoke signals, whatever you want to call it. Communicating is essential to their success and even to your team's success because, again, by communicating, you're saying expectations. When you set expectations, they're going to be they're going to be pushed to meet those expectations. They're going to push themselves to go past those and be like, "See, boss, you told me to meet them. Well, look what I've done. Besides just meet those, here's what I've done extra." And then yeah. there you go. You've you've now created that. Oh, you know what? I don't have to just meet. I can exceed. Yep. No, that's that's fantastic. It, and you know, another I I want to bring into a conversation point is is as we deal with this new normal, what's a passion project you've been able to focus on now more than ever? Sure, so um, it's actually a great question. And I think it goes back to my plan B. And so the timing has just kind of, kind of worked out well for me. Um, and here's why. So let's go back to September 2019 timeframe. Uh, a company that I used to work with, you know, again, maintained the relationships, you know, kept that network going. They wanted to bid me on a change management project. It was going to be part time work. Um, and, you know, from that time when I was employed, I hate to say it, but I had to dip into my 401k, uh, still dealing with the ramifications from that to this day. And so I talked with, you know, stakeholder number one, I talked with my wife and said, you know, here are the implications. It's going to be uh, me working an extra 15 or 20 hours uh, a week, but here are the benefits from doing that. And she was on board. And so after doing some prep work, the client ultimately wanted to put the change management work on pause. And so I realized that, you know, if I was prepared to put 15 or 20 hours of work extra per week for a client, now that that's paused, what could happen if I put that 15 to 20 hours of week towards me and how I can help others? And so I use that time to develop the online content for the Gain Comfort with Networking program. And so I wrapped it up in March. I had a webinar in February to say, here's where I'm headed with it. If you're interested, you can sign up. I'm going to launch it in March. And so we, you know, the whole COVID thing at the time, it was in the background. 
And then as it kind of played out, now I realize that, hey, this resource can help others. And so I'm not in it to make, you know, millions and millions of dollars. I'm in it to help others. So the program, it's an online program. It's virtual. It's available for, for everyone to use. And so I can imagine that there are restaurant workers or retail workers or people that have been laid off where they need to get comfortable with networking so that they can find out what their plan B is or what, what's next for them. And so I've made it available for everyone and happy to share the link with, with you. And, and what I'm seeing as a result is there are companies that were reliant on in-person networking, whether it's at conventions, whether it's at, you know, big events or uh, small face-to-face -face meetings, you know, so that they're attracting new business. As those have come to an end, uh, temporarily, of course, uh, they're looking to get their sales force online and being more active and visual or, or being able to be seen. And so I've had a couple of people reach out to me and say, Hey, can you help our sales force, you know, be more active? So th those are some of the things that I'm seeing uh, as a result of, of what we're going towards. And that's fantastic because, you know, again, when, if you look back at, if this had happened maybe even 15 years ago, our workforce probably could have fall, you know, our workforces could have fallen apart because there was no technology like there is today. And that's one thing I think we should all be, you know, thankful for is that there is a LinkedIn, there is Zoom, there's Skype, there's FaceTime, there's whatever, all these different platforms for us to utilize. Take advantage of those. Take, take yep. full advantage of those because they're there for you to use. Um, I know some people are like, oh, I don't want to be on this platform, but I don't want to be on that one. Well, find a platform like a LinkedIn as a professional. Again, LinkedIn is where you should be because that's where other people that are of your same placement are at. That's, and yep. if you haven't utilized LinkedIn yet, I encourage you, sign up for it start a conversation on LinkedIn with somebody, whether it be in your organization or in someone, or maybe even a competitor, start a conversation with them. Start that, hey, I see you're working in this space. I'm working in that space too. Let's have a conversation. Let's go have lunch online one day and yep. you know, go, go figure out how can you grow from this. And, and that's another part of this whole idea that started as, oh, this sounds kind of cool. How can we encourage growth? in today's place i mean and that's and that's crucial not just for the the cc executive but it's for the the regular joe that just sits in his cubicle and and punches the numbers into a spreadsheet all day how can you grow and you brought up a great thing about destiny's um, growth mindset and she mentioned that when we were on the phone earlier and on our earlier episode how is that you know going to impact us going forward i think it's a huge impact driven per, uh you know thing we should be doing and uh, i encourage you guys reach out and have a conversation about how can i grow my mindset because this is not a time for you to be static and i think that's another thing we should think about is the static versus active well you're static because you're at home be active at home be active and be purposeful while you're at home and working and so that is can be hugely beneficial for your networking skills is being active, being um, and, and going out there and being vulnerable. I think you mentioned yeah. that too. Is vulnerability is key right now in today's environment because you know what you're going to tell somebody, hey, you know what I'm dealing with the same thing you're dealing with. I got crazy people in my house too, and they're driving me crazy, and not, I can't get away from them. You know, they're, we're all stuck together. So let's take that as a as a win. Let's take that as a win for us as professionals that we can say, you know what. Hey, I get it. I'm in the same boat as you. Look, but you know what? It's not suffering. It's a, hey, this is a great opportunity. It's a great way for me to kind of reset my expectations of myself professionally. And yep. where, where can I go from there? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, forgive me here, but I, one of my things that helps me, and I think it also helps me help others during these times is, um, 
to be a little bit light about things, right? With the exception of the coronavirus. I, I don't make light of the coronavirus anymore. Before it came, you know, maybe when it was uh, in the Washington area, uh, you know, we saw all the memes with the corona bottles on one side of the shopping cart and everything else. I think that had its place then, but now it's real, right? It's really affecting people's lives. So I don't think it makes sense to, to joke about that. However, I think it's good to make light about other things. And so I, I just have to ask, uh, Brian, you know, you mentioned, you know, families and sometimes, you know, you get drove a little bit crazy and sometimes you're stuck together. Um, so if I'm hearing you correctly, are you suggesting I should buy stock in, in 3M and because you're buying a lot of duct tape? Is, is am, I, am I hearing you correctly there? Absolutely. Buy some duct tape because, you know, <laughs> at some point you're going to be like, zip over it. I'm done with you. I need to be quiet. And even your kids. I mean, I don't have any, but I can just imagine if you have some young kids or just wandering around the house like, oh, dad, look. Oh, and you're like, oh, my God. What is going on? How are your, how did your teachers manage you for so many yeah. hours a day? But that also brings us into that point of how are we looking at the groups that take care of things that we maybe took for granted? How are we thanking them? How are we, you know, and this is one thing like for me that I've kind of now thought about recently is like, you know, for me, I've never had to deal with kids. I couldn't imagine dealing with kids as a teacher, but there's teachers out there that have sacrificed so many hours of their day and yeah. how are we going to give back to them once everything is said and done and you know for me i'm like i got friends that are teachers i'm like you know what bless you for doing that because i would probably strangle a child because that would just not be me i would not want to do that and they're like no well, that's just that's just who i am so yeah. you know and again like what you mentioned about your career mission is what is that why what wakes you up in the morning? And I think that can also drive that conversation of networking. And yep. because that clearly defines what is it that you want to do? What is it that you love to do? And if you don't know what that is, you know what? That's when you have those conversations of, hey, I've done all these things. I kind of like this, but I kind of like that. What should, you know, maybe asking that, what do you think? Having those what do you think type conversations or, hey, you know, how would I keep break into this field? I've done a little bit of it, maybe not a lot, maybe don't have certifications or education in it, but I do know a little bit. How yep. can I break into that field? And people will be willing to, I know I've, I've opened up my calendar for people to, to call me and to connect with me and say, hey, I need to have some, uh, you know, opportunities to grow. And have those conversations be willing to, to be vulnerable. I think you even mentioned that as well as being vulnerable with people and saying, hey, I don't know it, but you might, or at least you may not be able to point me in the right direction. Yep. Let's go from there. And let's, let's have that one-on-one have that -on -one conversation, whether it be like this on Zoom or on maybe a text message or maybe a LinkedIn chat or whatever the case may be. Having that ability to say, you know what? I need, I need to learn. I need to learn. I need to grow. I need to grow because I need to figure out what to do next. And yep. what to do next can be so impactful for setting you up for future success. So, and, th and that's where we need to really understand this. Like, it's not that, you know, one person is going to be so great at this and one person is going to be so great at that. You can be great at so many different things, but you just need somebody to kind of push you. Say, hey, do this do that go here go there you know learn learn and grow and that's yeah. i think really can be i mean that's my 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 perspective right now is i want to grow i don't want to just sit around my house and just plunk them plunk away on my keyboard for 12 hours a day that's boring i want to be able to sit there have conversations with people and say tell me what is it that means to grow right now especially in today's world and you brought that up really great you know great point today about that is is you don't have to be okay it's not it's not a bad thing to network especially in today's environment it's actually beneficial for you and i really love that because so many people have that negative connotation yeah. but it's not supposed to be negative it's not supposed to be a bad thing it's supposed to be a yes this is good this is going to be a this is going to be me going into my next role 
with a leg up. Absolutely, Brian. Um, one thing I think you brought up real quickly is it reminds me of my hurricane analogy. So, and thank you for sharing that because imagine you're a tropical depression off of the eastern Atlantic, you know, close to Africa. Well, we know that you're eventually moving west and you may or may not hit landfall. And we certainly don't know where you're going to land. But we know that the hurricane is taking action. So it's moving further to the west. And as it's doing so, it's gaining intensity. It's gaining momentum. Because it's, forgive the pun here, but it's, it's figuring out who it is. It's talking with others. Not really, but you know, you can see where the analogy is coming in. But it's figuring out its path. And so as it's taking those steps, the cone of certainty becomes more defined until ultimately we know, is it going to make landfall or is it not? And if it is going to make landfall, where specifically is it going to land? So I encourage people, and it's through those steps. And those steps are reaching out to people, talking with others sharing your ideas and getting your reactions and the key point here is that's why it's so important to meet new people because if we just focus on those we already know we may get shut down or they may think what you can't do that and we start hearing no's but once we start interacting with new people we can get encouragement and we can get people that do see us for who we want to be so um, thank you for, for sharing what you did because it gave that, uh, that analogy for me to bring up. No, those are great. That's actually a great analogy. I hadn't really thought about it like that because if you really think about your professional development, it kind of, you're right, it kind of is like a hurricane. It's just kind of like plodding along and then all of a sudden you start picking up steam, which by picking up steam, you're picking up connections, you're pick, growing the network. You're growing your education. You're growing your professional identity. You're growing your professional development. And then all of a sudden, you're like, yeah. "Wow, I'm a hit." I'm, I'm, then you get to that. I want to make landfall. Well, making landfall is you're landing that job. You're landing that career that you've always wanted. It's because you've been preparing for so long to get to that point. And then you got to that point. And now you're actually there. You're now yeah. able to now make that impact. And you're now. As, as a servant leader, you're now able to look back and say, hey, other hurricanes, this is what I did. Here's how I got to that point. This is what drove my sense. And then that can translate into yours as well. It's, and, and you can encourage those around you to join because it's not a solo thing. And that's another thing about networking that I've learned from you is it's not just a solo thing. It's a group thing. And it should be welcomed in that regard yep yep no great great observations brian and and you know so as we start wrapping this up gus how would people connect with you and and further that conversation about networking because i know so many people are not comfortable how would they get in contact and start that conversation with you about getting comfortable networking sure um well i am available on linkedin uh and from a branding perspective if you don't do this already, but you can modify your username. Uh, so it's linkedin.com, and I think it's slash in slash, and it's Gus Lawson. So um, you just type in Gus Lawson, uh, networking coach, you can find me on, um, on LinkedIn that way. I'm happy to share my email address. It's glawson73 more, 734, sorry at gmail.com and then recognizing that some people are biased against LinkedIn uh, actually yesterday and this is an area of, of growth for me I started an Instagram account um, and I think it's Gus networking coach is my username there so stay tuned for more on that um, and then of course you know how can we have this discussion without a big shout out to uh, vets to industry that's uh, uh, a fantastic organization so I'm connected with them as well. Uh, lots of resources for, for the transitioning uh, military community. And uh, 
yeah, that's, that's how you can reach me. And, and I know I haven't really brought this up in today's call, but as a veteran, or even if you're a civilian, you're looking at the veteran community, how can they kind of, and, and I think I want to wrap this up is, if I was a veteran looking into joining the civilian community, or if I was a civilian looking at joining, you know, supporting the veteran community, what can I be doing to, to enhance that relationship? And why would I want to bring a veteran um, into my team or, you know, onto my organization? Or what would they be able to bring as a professional that I may not realize um, would be beneficial to me? Sure. So I think the big thing that veterans can, can do is, is a couple big things. The first one is we help bring normalcy to a situation. Absolutely. And the second thing is we can help build morale. And so, and let me dive deep on the normalcy piece. So in the military, we're so used to training because we know we fight how we train. And so we train, train, train. And so that when we're put in these dynamic situations, and it's broader than just uh, battles. Uh, so for example, I served on an aircraft carrier and I had to know how to respond if there was a hotline chaff bearing and what to do with the equipment and what orders I need to give to what spaces and so and so. And so it's just that ability to be able to think quickly and respond and do so in a calm manner. Because again, we've practiced and practiced and practiced until we're just reacting and we know how to react. So having that experience, uh, even though if for civilians you're entering a new area, uh, you, can, you can really bring that calm and bring that normalcy. I think that's, that's a huge uh, value that the, the veteran, uh, veterans can bring to any organization. No, and then absolutely. again, that morale piece. So from a, uh, from a leadership perspective, a lot of us are servant leaders. We know that we need to take care of our people for them to take care of the mission. And so it's those simple behaviors about enabling our teams and breaking down the obstacles for them to succeed and helping them do that, um, those, are, those are some of the big ways that, that veterans can help. Those are great things. I, I, I want to thank you for bringing that up because so many of our civilian community don't realize the value that a veteran can bring into your organization, especially in times like these. This is what we thrive in. Let's be honest, this, the veteran community thrives in this kind of environment, thrives in this uncertainty because we, live in uncertainty and that's kind of what we again you brought that training point that's what we train for um so we're very comfortable in that and i hope our civilian counterparts are watching this you know take into consideration when they do get back to normal <laughs> yep. even though this may be our new normal um welcome the veteran community into your organization if not just for the fact of you know you're going to bring in a capable leader but you're also bringing in somebody that's, that's very knowledgeable about dealing with crisis. And they're very capable of handling those with ease and also with the knowledge of it's not going to last forever. We're going to get through this and I'll help walk you through this. So, you know, help them. I hope they take that into to account when it, everything is said and done that the veteran community will be part of their conversation piece. And, you know, I thank you, Gus, for your time today. Um, it's been a pleasure to have you on today because, again, so many people are so uncomfortable with networking. I hope people reach out to you and I hope our audience really takes advantage of your guidance and your leadership on the networking piece and really, t really takes it to the next level because it, it is so valuable for not just your professional development, but also your um, your personal development too. So. You know, thank you so much for your time, Gus. I look forward to, you know, hearing your successes on the networking piece and helping others grow comfortable in that. And, you know, I would love to have you on again. I mean, this is, this is, this is something that I want to continue doing well after the whole lockdown is over. Yeah. Um, because, again, it, it's sharing those thoughts that, you know, maybe those of us that are 
you know, maybe like, oh, you know what, it's just a short time thing. No, let's let's continue the conversation, ladies and gentlemen. And, yep. uh, you know, again, thank you so much, Gus. Uh, my name is Brian Shu. I'm with uh, Lockdown with Thought Leaders. Uh, you'll find our episodes on YouTube, and uh, you'll also find them on the blog of Full Moon Digital. And, um, you know, I just, I'm so grateful for this time that we were able to spend together uh, today, Gus, and I look forward to you know, our future conversations, because again, yeah. it's so many things are happening that are great, not just on the veteran space, but in the general space of how can we grow our communities and how can we make them better? So thank you so much, Gus. I really appreciate you. I hope you take care of yourself out there. Stay well. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> hear of anybody getting COVID-19. So, and those of you that are listening, I hope you're taking yourself, um, your safety into consideration as well. So, and if you are having to be out and about, again, take those safety precautions. Um, we want everybody to, to return to normal in as soon as possible. But again, I hope you have a great day, Gus. Take care of yourself and we'll be chatting again soon. Yep. Thank you so much, Brian. I really enjoyed our discussion. And likewise, okay. I look forward to building the relationship. Absolutely, Gus. Thank you so much. Have a great one today. Take care of yourself and have a great time. We'll talk to you guys soon. Yep.